The Artemis program is excessively complex, unrealistically priced, comprises crew safety, poses very high mission risk of completion, and is highly unlikely to be completed in a timely manner, even if successful. That was a statement from former NASA Administrator Mike Griffin in a congressional hearing on NASA's Artemis program on January 17, 2024. This means that NASA is pouring a bucket of cold water on its own face. This is a disaster. So, what's the proposed alternative to Artemis? How will NASA and Congress and Elon Musk react? Can Starship be removed from Artemis? All will be answered in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The contentious issues were raised at a January 17th hearing at the House Science Committee's Space Subcommittee. During the hearing, a NASA official clarified the agency's choice to postpone its next two Artemis missions by nearly a year, with critics and a former NASA administrator expressing skepticism about the revised schedule. NASA announced on January 9th that it was delaying Artemis II, the first crewed flight of the SLS and Orion, from late 2024 to no earlier than September 2025 to provide more time to address issues with the Orion spacecraft. That, in turn, delayed Artemis III, the first crewed lunar landing of the overall effort, to no earlier than September 2026. While some witnesses found the delay for Artemis II reasonable, there were reservations about the feasibility of launching Artemis III as early as 2026. Mike Griffin, former NASA administrator from 2005 to 2009, expressed skepticism, saying, I don't think Artemis III, the landing mission, is at all realistically scheduled and his subsequent views were as strong as a storm, completely rejecting NASA's current plan. Griffin believed that NASA could not afford to engage in a convoluted, partially commercialized strategy for returning humans to the moon, especially with an emphasis on long-term settlement. Instead, he emphasized the imperative for the agency to return to fundamental principles and expedite the lunar mission. In his view, the space agency needed to initiate a fresh start for the moon program and discard all elements of commercial space endeavors, focusing on a more straightforward approach. To do this, he proposed that the contracts awarded by NASA to SpaceX and Blue Origin, part of the Artemis program, should be terminated for the convenience of the government. He argues that persisting with programs deemed unlikely to achieve their goals is not only distracting, but also detrimental to NASA and the nation's reputation even if these programs are being executed without cost. Not only does Griffin provide negative assessments of the mission, but he also introduces information about a new plan as an alternative approach to NASA's Artemis program. This is an enlightening read for those who want to understand that some traditional space supporters would pursue the U.S. space program if they could. It may not be entirely theoretical, as Griffin may aspire to return as NASA administrator if Donald Trump's elected president. But is this a feasible proposal? According to his plan, he envisions reverting the nation to the familiar landscape of 2008, just before the advent of commercial space. That is what he and NASA were pursuing in the Constellation program in 2005 to 2006. The architecture includes two launches of the SLS Block II rocket, one carrying the lunar lander and transfer stage, and the other carrying the crewed Orion spacecraft and transfer stage. Both will rendezvous in low lunar orbit to transfer astronauts to the lander and spend a week on the lunar surface before returning to Orion for the journey back home. Griffin is attempting to reassemble these familiar elements, relying on Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman to efficiently return astronauts to the moon. The straightforward approach outlined here could put U.S.-led expeditions on the moon beginning in 2029, given bold action by Congress and firm contractor direction by NASA, he concluded. However, if you've been a longtime follower of the space industry, you might recall NASA's program at the time was canceled due to being over budget, behind schedule, and lacking in innovation. From this, we can see his alternative approach as a potential regression that could push NASA back into the budgetary crises of the past. Even Elon Musk, the head of SpaceX, has responded to Griffin's proposals on the social media platform XA. His plan makes no sense, just a worse version of Apollo. Starship will enable a permanently occupied moon base and even a city on the moon one day. When Mike Griffin first became NASA Administrator in 2005, he commissioned the Exploration Systems Analysis Study that examined in detail the concepts for Constellation vehicles and systems. It was a good solid study, but NASA hid the true cost estimates, which were that on average, the full Constellation Lunar Program would cost $10 billion and more per year in the NASA budget at a time when the budget was approximately $15 billion per year, a 40% increase. 
But this cost has never truly become an issue because no one has translated this increase into an authorization or budget allocation bill in Congress. Griffin's decision to cancel numerous space technology programs had far-reaching consequences, impacting the agency's ability to explore more efficient and cost-effective approaches across design, engineering, manufacturing, and operations. The death of space technology development capabilities under Griffin led NASA into a legacy hardware trap. The Human Exploration and Development of Space Directorate advocated relying on outdated technology, contributing to increased costs as NASA refrained from seeking better or more cost-effective alternatives. A notable example of this legacy approach is the SLS rocket, a replacement for the abandoned Ares-5. SLS, developed by NASA Marshall Space Flight Center, repurposed the space shuttle main engine into an expensive, expendable rocket, lacking any efforts for first stage recovery. This design choice starkly contrasted with the plans of SpaceX and Blue Origin to recover and vertically land their respective rocket stages. The estimated cost of SLS launches has increased over the years, with the initial internal estimate being around $2 billion and the current figure standing at $4 billion. This skyrocketing cost raises concerns about the affordability of multiple SLS launches for NASA's exploration programs in the future. If Griffin's proposal envisions having two SLS Block II rockets ready to launch by 2029, this seems hardly plausible. Notably, the development of the Block I version took 12 years and cost $30 billion. Even the interim version, Block IIb, is not expected until 2028. The prospect of having two advanced Block II rockets magically ready within a year raises serious doubts. Additionally, the lunar lander, a crucial component of Griffin's plan, faces fundamental challenges. It lacks design and funding. If pursued through Griffin's suggested cost-plus acquisition strategy, could incur costs ranging from $10 to $20 billion and take a decade considering past performance metrics. Realistically, if NASA's budget were to double, Griffin's plan might only result in a lunar landing by the late 2030s, based on the track record of contract performance with Orion and the SLS rocket both in development since 2005. So, what's the most cost-effective solution for NASA here? Well, it seems that only SpaceX's Starship can come to the rescue. Mike Griffin has appeared not to favor private enterprises for a while, despite being the initiator of the Commercial Orbit Transportation Services program back in 06, which sponsored the development of SpaceX's cargo spacecraft and orbital sciences. Meanwhile, SpaceX has become a key player in most of NASA's human missions, with the Dragon capsule being the only spacecraft capable of carrying astronauts to the ISS. This vehicle has also broken NASA's dependence on Russian flights since the retirement of the space shuttle program. Despite the lower cost per seat that NASA has to pay for astronauts compared to the Soyuz, Griffin deemed the money spent on cargo and crew services provided by SpaceX as excessive and has maintained a negative view of SpaceX and the U.S. commercial space industry. Honestly, rejecting the collaborative approach in favor of an expensive Apollo-like lunar mission appears impractical. The future envisioned by NASA and SpaceX involves moving away from monumental launches of entirely expendable spacecraft. Instead, they aim to develop reusable technologies in space refueling and sustainable spacecraft, ushering in an era of affordable spaceflight in the 21st century. This forward-looking approach contrasts with past achievements that proved unsustainable over time. Ultimately, none of the committee members showed clear interest in Griffin's alternative architecture. They also did not pose any questions to him or the other witnesses about it. And that's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.